there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on that wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup, Jordy. And this week we're going to carry on with work aboard my friend's boat, MV Zephyrus, and we're going to start in the shower. Yes indeed, MV Zephyrus does have a completely separate shower which is a lovely feature. However, the drain for it is actually a um, deck fill, actually it says water on it, which means you can never drain uh, the last quarter of an inch out of the shower which is quite annoying and frankly as a result we've never really used it very much because it's kind of annoying so the sump and pump for that and all that is all it's kind of a mess because it's mostly used as a closet as are I think many people's showers but going cruising it'd be nice to have a shower so that's today's project have fun so here we go. I bet you didn't expect we'd be spending all this quality time in the shower together. So, of course, a deck fill does have screw fittings to be screwed down to the deck, but there's no screws in these. I'm poked around with various screws, and no, I'm just getting right down to the plywood uh, or whatever goop is holding the thing down. So, I think all I really have is it bonded down. So if I wiggle it a little bit, I can feel some wigglage, but I don't want uh, to damage this any more than I'm going to. For instance, this is plywood that's been fiberglassed and painted. And if I pull up very hard here, it's very likely to delaminate the fiberglass in a nasty <laughs> across here. So I'm going to take a knife and run it around in here and some heat to try and soften whatever this is bedded in. Most likely 5200. Okay, let's see what that's achieved. I can pry up a little bit and get the knife under. Start to see what I can do. Oh, that's a lot better than it was before. Of course, it softened some of the paint here as well, but that's a small price to pay. Heat really is the only solution for horrible 5200. Oh, there we go. We're getting some real mileage here. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to fish this out, but I'm going to hope I can because option is oh that's hot there we go now can we fish it yes we can look <laughs> okay before i get too excited there's two things i have to confirm one in that is that is the uh, drain i bought an appropriate size to deal with it and by gosh yes i think by the time i put a chamfer on that uh fix this up and um put some goop of some sort probably it would normally be butyl in this case but because i'm not going to be able to put this nut on the bottom i'm going to have to rely on the bonding uh it'll probably be pretty close to 5200 in my case 291 so yeah now the next thing i have to test is whether or not let me get this nut off of here so I'm, because i'm not going to need it now i got to make sure that this combination will actually slide down and around that corner and I put the hose clamp on just to be sure. Now this might be a little frustrating because the hose is probably too long for the initial. It's tight. It is really, ah, but it's going to do it. Excellent. Now look at that. I can go all the way down, um, which means there's enough depth for that full elbow. Now it doesn't mean I want that because I want good drainage. So it may be that I shorten this anyway, but I can see that it's not going to affect how I go around the corner. Even if it was significantly further down, it wouldn't bother it. So let's see if I can get this back out of here. <laughs> yes, only just. Okay, now it's tidying this up, which is not my favorite kind of work.
recessed just enough so a little bit of sealant and it'll drain properly. Loving this. Okay, really I have no idea why I'm showing you painting this, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'll show you the first little bit and then that'll be it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Happen to find just the right paint, which is very handy. All right, one coat. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna want several more. Holy moly, I've saved you having to watch too much of this. Um, I had a good run last night until it got too dark. Um, making up cables. Uh, I <laughs> The number of lugs I have crimped on and shrink tube I've shrunk in the last 24 hours. Bit impressive. Okay, so um, I'm just down to the last few interconnects in the batteries. And for the interconnects, I'm using... Um, single lot in other words uh good for 150 amps which is plenty in there and uh my little friend here i love this thing we'll crimp these up that is a nice 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 connection let's get some shrink tube on that there we go good we'll let that cool a bit then we'll measure in place for the length of it. I would say about there. And it pays to on a short cable to align um, the rotation of the lug to roughly where you're going to use it because you surpri you'd be surprised how hard it is to twist a uh, eight inch long cable. So uh, because these both go flat, we'll put it right like that. And the second one. Okay, that's awesome. All right. Very nice. I'll keep at it again. Too much, too much, I know. Well, folks, we're pretty much there. All the interconnects are on. All the cables are tidied up fairly nicely. So quick summary, obviously we have the two uh, house banks where, and their positives come together and meet in this uh, big bus here. Um, all the negatives come together and meet in this bus here. Uh, of course, the negative from the start battery joins this. The positive goes up to the start um, main battery switch. And here's the main feed going up to the main bus and battery switch, well at first the breaker, in the panel. Uh, we have two more uh, feeds which are charging feeds. Here's the solar panel with its uh, fuse that um, came with it and the alternator circuit. Now both of these I have a little slack on because I may change them because I may add shunts in here so I can do um, current management or current um, analysis, in other words, watching the loads, uh, but I'm still not quite sure what we're going to do with that. Anyway, relatively tidy. Um, time to close it up. And there we go. All lids on and strapped down. I am just so pleased with this. Turned out to be a very, very slick setup. Um, just two more notes that I should point out to you. You probably noticed this bloody big cable coming through here, which is making a mess of my tidy wires going through. That is the one of the cables forward to the windlass, uh, which I have to relocate to come up into the helm console here uh, to attach to the main bus. And also, I think I pointed out that the heavy wires this one and these two um, are going to have to be sheathed in another layer of uh, protection so that I can take advantage of the ABYC 40 inch rule for uh, overload protection. In other words, the main fuse, in this case it's a breaker, uh, is normally supposed to be within 7 inches of the battery, which would put it down in here and be awkward with two battery boxes. But if you sheath the cables, um, you can go up to 40 inches, uh, which I can comply with in the helm in the helm console there. So I just have to find the perfect clear tubing, and that will make it obvious that it's still a wire inside, but be relatively tidy, and I'll look after that. Anyway, I'm done. Time for a beer, don't you think? All right, then some preparation for cruising isn't all that glamorous. Uh, have to replace the hot water heater, which in the week before we went cruising decided to pack it in, which is okay, better that it did it now than when we were out at sea. 
may seem a bit severe to simply just cut the hoses, but when you're working with PEX, that's about the simplest solution. One advantage of a wooden boat with a bilge pump, no harm that it all goes into the bilge. Okay, gotta get this out of the way. There's a bit to do here, yeah. Oh, okay. Ugh. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Okie dokie. Well, the trick now is to get all the fittings off the outside of this tank and get them onto the new tank. And uh, that should be pretty straightforward. And uh, now there's one interesting thing. Well, let me get the new one out of the box and I'll explain what that interesting thing is. There we go. All right then, so here we go. On the hot water heater I removed, was a tempering valve, uh, which is kind of a neat thing. It was an option on some hot water heater, and it's uh, tied in to the heat exchanger so that when you're heating hot water from engine heat, in other words, the coolant that comes off the engine can run through your hot water heater to heat hot water while you're at sea, while you're underway, which is great. And this tempering valve makes sure that you don't overheat the water in the hot water heater um, if the engine heat uh, is very very hot so it's nice the new hot water heater did not come with one uh, they don't seem to be available anymore so I'm wondering if I can retrofit this tempering valve onto the new hot water heater although the configuration of the various ports is slightly different but it, it may work out let me let me take them all off of here and see what we can do first off there we go Okay. Okay, so technically we have everything we need. Let's move on to the new tank. I don't know if I've talked about taking PEX rings off before. Um, uh, most of you know that I'm crazy about PEX uh, plumbing. I think it's a fantastic system. There's two main kinds of rings. There's dozens of other ones actually, but there's two main ones, at least in Canada. That's a stainless steel crimp style, which has a nub that is crimped, and a regular one that is um, crimped all the way around, which I don't like, but um, everyone will have their own opinion. Uh, getting these off is a bit of a trick. A stainless, of course, is um, a bit of a gnarly metal, so it takes uh, a bit of twisting and messing to try and disengage the uh, way this clip is attached. So basically a bunch of twists until we get to the uh, fatigue point of the stainless and it'll break off. There we go. Bits and pieces and the rest of the ring. Now because PEX pipe itself is an incredibly, um, has memory, uh, it's going to be stuck on the barbs of this relatively well. And putting a knife on here to slit this open puts lots of nicks in the brass of the barb. So what I do is try not to drop any screwdrivers in the ocean. Uh, I take a vice grip and I pinch the pecs just like this so that it makes a little, I move it back and then I pinch it. And so I can just grab a bit and often you can see that I'm stretching it. I'm making a little bulb there sticking out the side. And then when I release that, I can push that back over and it stretched all the pecs so that I can relatively easily be, eh, didn't quite make it. There we go. Nice, without damaging the barb. I find it always interesting when you take apart a, a pex barb fitting like that, you can see the corrosion where the water has got to in the past and it got to the second ring there, but the brass is still nice and clean above that. Just showing you how well those things lock. Love pex stuff. Okay, so this assembly is ready to reinstall. Let's clean up the other one. Now this is a really interesting fitting. It's a pipe thread, um, although I don't believe it's tapered. And so what it does is you align it wherever you are happy with where it needs to be. And then you run this nut up, which has an O-ring on it, which creates a seal against the flange of the female fitting on the tank kind of a strange fitting and to tell you the truth I'm not sure I entirely trust it. I'd like to see the way the where the other side of the o-ring sits against. Uh, yeah so I think I'm gonna do a combination of things. There was pipe dope all over this and you can see it all over here too. I'm gonna to put tape on here anyway and uh, maybe a combination of the two will keep this nicely sealed up. I'm gonna air on the inside so I don't conflict with the o-ring which means I'll be having to cut away some tape on the 
opening here. Good, I'll get a knife, cut that out. All right then, let's see how this works. If I wind this in until this is perpendicular with the outlet, I have enough hose left, I can reconnect this. In principle, this is going really well. So now I'll wind this nut back down. I have a lot of plumber's tape in there, so I'm pretty sure that even if this doesn't maintain a good seal, I'm gonna be okay. There we go. Now I just need to cut this right about there. Measure twice, cut once. Yeah, let's measure twice, cut once. Okay, okay, okay. Goes there, about that much offset. It's gonna come up to about there. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Okay, that is as tidy as I could expect. Let's take it inside, put it back in the hole. <sighs> the whole logic to putting this thing here was that the closer you put the hot water tank to the kitchen sink, which is the most common use for hot water, the less water you waste, because every time you turn on the hot water, it's instantly hot. On a boat, that's important. You don't want to be waiting for water to get hot while it's going down the drain. That was the idea, anyway. It's in. All right, PEX is all reconnected, about to reconnect the wiring, uh, but I'm just doing a pressure test. I've just turned the water on. Okay, let's at least start making electric hot water, and tomorrow, We'll connect up the engine hot water. You know, this was miserable, but it's done. And now for the fun part of this hot water heater install, connecting it up to the engine for hot water while underway. So happily, this engine had been connected up uh, for hot water heat in the past. So I've just removed this uh, little uh, coupler and plug and put some Teflon tape on the pipe fitting coming off the water pump. So I'm going to turn around to put a barb fitting on for the heater hose that will run back to the hot water heater. So I'll just get some tape on here. Now in a perfect world, I wouldn't be mixing bronze and yellow brass. But I don't think this is going to be a problem here. This is all on the fresh water. In other words, the engine coolant side of the system. Uh, so coolant runs through here and I think will be pretty safe from corrosion. Okay, and on the back of the engine, there's a fitting here already, but it just seems like I don't need all this material. I can just put the T, I mean the fitting I have straight into the back of the engine. Water will pour out of here. Okay, so I'll be able to just replace that with a fitting that'll go right in and direct the hose down where I want it to go. But I gotta get some tape on here and clean up these threads. It's rather convenient that I haven't put any uh, antifreeze in the cooling system on this engine yet because I knew I was going to do a couple of projects like this. So, fresh water in the bilge, no problem. Okay, I'm not going to take you through the joy that it was fishing this through the other side of the muffler and the far end of the uh, kitchen cabinet behind the hot water heater. Suffice to say, I have brought it through. I always like to be able to find what I consider the perfect routing, both for simplicity and tidiness, but also ease of future maintenance. And certainly there's a lot going on here. Uh, there's the injection pump, the um, lovely cable controls for it, all the injection lines, filter which needs maintenance. So I'm thinking I'm going to come up here and onto about there. All right, all right, all right. How about that? I've rerouted it yet again. Now, this time I've got it all the way on top and uh, just up and out of the way uh, because I'm already going to be building a bracket back here to give some support to the return line, a uh, return fuel line. So I know I need to do something up here to help both of these out. So this will work just fine and it's high enough up that it's out of the way of all this stuff. Anyway, this is where it's going. Okay, so here's where the hoses join, and they're going to head down into the bilge. Now, you're going to say, Peter, you can't zip tie your two hoses together um, because one is hot and one is the return, and you'll um, short circuit. But what you can do, put the zip tie on a little bit loose, and then put another zip tie around 
between the two. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here on the camera. And what that does is it ties them together, but apart. Hey, <laughs> works a treat. Put a couple more down here. Keep this nice and neat. Okay then, well, I am relatively pleased with the way this worked out. Um, not the most elegant installation, but it's gonna work fine and it's serviceable. Um, disregard the stray wire and a few other little messes going on down there. I'm gonna spend the bulk of the time we're out cruising tidying up all these sorts of things. Okay folks, this should be interesting. I am in a, a Zoom um, brewery tour. Uh, with a bunch of friends that they set it up to drink all the um, a lighthouse uh, brewery from here in Victoria beers. I have a selection of them all over the table now. I have just muted um, the call here. So I'm going to start and I don't want to stay too long because they're wondering why I'm not participating. I'm going to start with the companion which is their lager. Yes, I apologize. Um, I, I should um, come clean. Uh, I have an itty bitty little YouTube channel where I do uh, I feature a beer at the end of every episode. So we're all starting with the uh, companion, are we? What do we What do we think? That's a good idea. I, I'm not a fan of lagers I personally. I think it takes. Okay, folks. Well, we've had the uh, company, which is a very mundane lager, and uh, for, if I understand correctly, what's happening in the um, Zoom here? We're going to move on to the Citrus Shore. Uh, which I'm much more excited about. So let's fire this up. See what we think of this. I love the color of it. Looks fantastic. Citrus Shore. I like it. I like it. That's good. So well, we're moving on to uh, the next beer, which is uh, Race Rocks. Nice and dark. They call it an amber ale, but I don't really think of it as an amber. It's almost like a nut brown type of thing anyway. And look, the mess I'm making of pouring it. And so I've got this to uh, settle to a certain degree and we'll see what we think of it. Yeah, it's like a nut brown. It's almost a porter. Um, I'd forgotten I'd had it. It's actually not as bad as I thought it might've been. Anyway, generally pretty good race rocks. And well, we're on to the last beer, which is the only one that I think I have had before and enjoyed, and it's the Shipwreck IPA. Um, I wouldn't say it's an exceptional IPA, but it is quite drinkable and, well, very foamy. So we'll see how we're doing here. And, uh, wow, yet another disastrous pour, but um, I'll get what I can into the glass and I'll rejoin the uh, brewery tour here online. Okay then, well, um, I have waited for the head to subside and uh, chatted with my friends online here. People seem to think this is the finest beverage of the lot, so we'll see what we think. Oh, and it definitely is. That is a nice, tart IPA. Simple, not exotic, not particularly sophisticated, but I would say definitely Shipwreck IPA is the, um, the best beer in this lot. So, well, I've just logged out of the Zoom... Um, uh, lighthouse beer um, tour. Um, it's kind of a fun idea, really. We're great, met a lot of interesting people. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Lighthouse Brewery, but I have to admit um, the Shipwreck IPA is definitely the pick of the pack here, and uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I have a lot of beer to drink here. Um, I haven't forgotten that I owe you folks a word of the week, and well, is it possible we haven't yet done beer? So, if you'd like to win travels with Jordy t-shirt, you simply use the word beer in a comment down below and I'll pick for the first 24 hours worth of comments at random. And if I pick you, you win a travels with Jordy t-shirt. Beer. Cheers. Oh my God.